Hello friends, and welcome back to the channel! I'm Handington, and today we're continuing Dokies and Dragons! Now, it's a brand new day, and I had been testing th some things out with this, and I think I figured out what the problem is with recording. See, if I launch the game after the recording is going, then the rest of the recording goes completely blank, and then it doesn't load anything. Even if it shows that I am recording it, it just doesn't actually record anything. However, when I have the game up first, then I hit record, then it's able to record some things, and it's able to show everything on screen and whatnot. So, I think I figured it out. However, this time, I have decided that I would not even hit the record button, because I found that I kind of like these more just as a podcast series, because the visuals on screen are not as interesting as what you could imagine in your head. Uh, and since this is a game that actually lends itself very well to being a whole podcast series. I think I will do that from now on. I may even do one more route. I may even do Yuri's route after this, because I'm having fun with it. So, we will see how things go. I will try to be more descriptive now that I have in mind that you cannot see what is going on on the screen. Now I will be a bit more, uh, careful to describe everything in a better, in better detail. So we're gonna load up the save that I have from before. And, wow, it's nice. We, we don't, we just start off right where I had saved, in the middle of the text even. We don't have to restart uh, at some other, like, point. That's nice. I, I don't think I described that well enough. It starts up exactly where you leave it, which is excellent. Anyway, so, I gotta remember the voices. It's been a few days since I have recorded this, so, uh, let me think, let me think. Uh, oh, okay, just Handington speaking now. Yeah, let's keep heading towards the cave now, shall we? I mean, you're listening to all this in a row, so you know what the story is. I forget. <laughs> uh, I forget what we're doing, besides going after the goblins. I think we're, we're, we're taking Sayori's route, so we're going to do it peacefully. Peacefully! All right. That, that almost sounded like I said peacefully. A anyway. Uh, anyway, anyway, anyway. Monica voice. Monica voice. Okay. After that encounter, you continue your march forward to the cave. So we're in the spot, there's a little rock wall over to the side. One of the trees is cut down in the distance, but the rest of them are all standing. There's the little Eiffel Tower stone outside of the cave. And the little cave entrance is like, um, it's a, like an archway of stones. It doesn't look like it's a natural cave. There's a gate made of a rusted metal that is open most of the way, but a little bit of it is still showing there. And no goblin is out just yet. But there's also little flowers around the little Eiffel Tower stone, which is right across from the cave. When you, it's like a, the path is like a T, and to the left is the cave, and to the right is uh, the Eiffel Tower stone. If you're l looking at the bottom of the T, and right above the T on the top, there's a little uh, puddle or, or a little tiny lake. So that is the area as of the moment. After following the stream for a while longer, you finally arrive at the cave's entrance. There doesn't seem to be anyone around here, but you can hear the sound of goblin voices coming from inside. Strange runes decorate the monoliths scattered around this place. You've never seen anything like it. There's only one monolith, though. Oh, no, wait a minute. There's two. There's an Eiffel Tower all the way on the other side of the Eiffel Tower. I've missed it the entire time. There are runes. My mistake. It looks like this is it. Are we ready to go in? Suddenly you hear a goblin's voice coming from the top of a nearby tree. Yeah, who goes there? The goblin leaps and lands between you and the cave entrance. Did you come here looking for trouble? You look like you came here to start a trouble. You got trouble, folks! Right here in River City! Trouble with a capital T, and that rhymes with P, and that stands for pool. All right, so we're doing Sayori's route, so we're going to try diplomacy on him. Oh, and the goblin says, put your hands up where I can see them now. Well, I'm already a hand, so I'm already where you can see me. But, uh, psh, try diplomacy. I'll raise my hands. Handington raised his hands. Ha ah, ha ha. Relax, we're not looking for trouble. We just want to talk to the Goblin King. What business do you have with a king? There have been uh, 
incidents involving his subjects in the surrounding region. We're here on a diplomatic mission. <laughs> the goblin squints his eyes in suspicion. I mean, that logically makes sense. Ha! A grumble. Very well. Go inside and head to the right where the tunnel meets. Be done with your business quickly. Do not go wandering around inside, or else your safety will not be guaranteed. Understood. Let's head into the cave. Ooh, cave. Have not seen this entrance before. There's a lot of blue, a lot of pillars, and a couple of vines around the screen. You are now inside the cave. The tunnel split into three paths ahead. To the left, straight, and right. Oh, now which direction would you go? Uh, go left, straight, or right? Hmm. What do you think, Sayori? Yep. Okay. I guess we'll go to... I should flip a coin. I don't know what to do. All right, let me let me see if I can find a coin around here. Coin, coin, wonderful coin. Is there a coin around here? I have a chocolate coin, which now that I think about it, this chocolate coin has not melted within the like 85 degree heat. What is this thing made of? Actual coin? All right. Heads, which means going either left or ahead. Because it was, yeah, heads is left, right, uh, tails is right. And then I would do it again for the straight ahead. So I'm going to, tails will now be uh, left, uh, tails will be go straight ahead, heads will be left. Aha, tails, so we're going to go straight ahead. You head inside the tunnel into... The cave straight in front of, uh, you walk forward. That's all, folks. Na 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 na. This tunnel seems to lack that distinct uh, goblinoid smell that covers the rest of the tunnels. Unlike the unner, unner, meh, unlike the other tunnels around the cave, this one is completely dark. Stagnating air is common! Foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. I'm going to run out of prune juice. I light my torch or let's turn back. Let's see. Well, I think Sayori has taken the smart routes. But then again, Yori was interested in things being somewhat dangerous. I don't know. Should I light my torch or turn back? The entire screen is completely blank except the two options, which is ominous. I guess we'll be adventurous and light the torch, or turn back. We want to keep Sayori safe, so let's turn back. On second thought, it's probably not the right way. Let's head back. Thank you. Oh wait, wrong person. Thank you! This tunnel is making me uneasy. Oh, we satisfied Yori. That's fine. But we're not doing the Yori route this time. You're back where the tunnels meet. Oh, now we gotta choose left or right. All right. Heads, we're going left. You head down the tunnel to the left. Ooh, very green with little lights. I will, I will try, try to be, be more descriptive, descriptive now that I have in mind that you cannot see what is going on on the screen. Ooh, very green with little lights. After walking a short distance, you discover a small wooden window at the side of the tunnel. The window is closed. The window has a large sign above it, written in the goblin language. Open the window or leave it be. Open the window. 
Could it be a shop? I hope it's not a trap. Maybe I could get more prune juice here. I gently open the window. As you approach the window, it opens abruptly on its own. A goblin with a sparkling smile was standing behind it. Hey, it was good. Hello. If you wanted to go shopping, and then you come to the right place, how can I help you today? Uh, yes, yes, uh, let's see. Do you have any weapons? Sorry, but I'm not allowed to sell weapons to outsiders. I can sell you something even better, however. The goblin looks. The goblin looks to each side, then leans in to whisper. Well, he's huge now. Valuable information. A dirty little secrets. Okay, what can you tell us about the Goblin King? The King, huh? How much are you willing to pay? One copper coin, one silver coin, one gold coin. Logically, we should go with the gold coin. I toss one gold coin at the shopkeeper. Ah, it hit me in the eye. King Zarek, 17's throne room, is built on the ruins of an ancient druid temple. He has learned how to use some of its magical secrets. He has been using a special crystal's magic to imprison, uh, not impersonate, I meant imprison a high-value human and hold them for ransom. If the crystal he holds is destroyed, the prisoner will be set free. Be careful about what you say to him, though. He's quick to anger, especially when dealing with humans. If you offered him, or if you offend him, I'm sorry. I'm reading this from a paper, and I only have one eye. He wouldn't think twice about challenging you to a duel. And we're not talking about the Yu-Gi-Oh kind. And well, it's time to close up a shop for the day. Thank you once again for your business. The goblin closes the window to his shop and locks it from the inside. Well, time to head back to the main tunnel, I guess. You make your way back to the main tunnels. That was good info. Oh, we're back here again, where the tunnels meet. We could go back outside. It's a new option. We'll go to the right. Ooh. Now I want to explore. Let's head to the right before we go back outside. You head to the right down some stairs. Oh! It's the same room that we were in before when we fought the Goblin King, so this must be his throne room. You are now in a large, watery cavern filled with heaps of junk. Hundreds of goblins occupy the room. They all seem to be chatting casually until you appeared. I guess it looks like you did make the wrong choice. Oopsie poopsie. At the top of one of the junk piles is a goblin sitting on it. It speaks up and speaks to you with an, with an incredibly deep, manly, imposing voice. Outsiders, what have you done risking setting foot in my domain? We just want peace. We came here to try to reason with you. Your people have been committing crimes against non-goblins all over this region, but we want to put an end to the conflict without resorting to violence. That's right! We just want everyone to be able to coexist peacefully! The Goblin King looks irritated. You are wrong! My people have committed no crimes. They have been simply protecting the boundaries of the Goblin Kingdom. This region has always belonged to the goblins. It is humans who have encroached upon our lands and slaughtered our people mercilessly for generations. And yet here you are, claiming to come in the name of peace when all you want is to try and drive us from our homes once more. Even though, you know, the goblins have been attacking people. But, you know, the, the, the goblin king doesn't hear that. I'm just speaking this loudly to the rest of the group. Tell me how many gold coins did they offer you to exterminate our people for your heroic quest reward? How many gold coins would you consider a fair reward for slaying an innocent, helpless creature? I have 240. <laughs> I have no doubt that you would accept a quest to slay your own mother if the rewards were epic. Try persuasion or try intimidation. I, th I think Sayori would rather persuasion. 
Maybe we can come to some sort of agreement here. I love how he didn't answer the question. <laughs> Humans and goblins gain nothing by fighting each other. We can agree to peace. We can all prosper. Think about the knowledge we could share, about threats that we could face together. We know we... We know this used to be a druid temple. We could teach you how to fully harness its power for the good of your people. All we want to do is what's best for our people. Let us help you. That's cool. We got the knowledge from the other place, and now we know. And knowing is half the battle. Okay, roll a persuasion check. Thanks to your knowledge about the magic of the druid temple ruins, you get to roll with an advantage. I roll a six. Darn it. The Goblin King grins wickedly. Your lies are like water, human. I can see them quite clearly. You know, you really should remember to save Handington. I... Yeah, yeah I, I know, I know. You wasted enough of my time. Guards, execute these bothersome intruders. Hundreds of goblins are around you, ready their weapons, about to attack. Everyone get ready! This is it. It's the time to fight with everything we've got. Wow, Handington, you started to mess up my own voice. I'm sorry. I, 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 I just, I, this is the first time I have to do your voice this time. Oh, sure. I will not let you, I will not let you, I, 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 you're under my protection. All of us are like Porky Pig. We can't speak today. This is madness, but I like it. Let's fight. Rule for initiative. You fought bravely. Before you fell, you killed goblins. Yada yada. Remembered as heroes. You died. And didn't save. At all during this entire playthrough. Oh gee. You're not supposed to reload in a tabletop RPG. But you can go back from your last save point. Oh wow. Your last save point was basically through the rest of the game. Oh no. Well, this entire episode was for naught. <laughs> well, I believe it's that time again. If you like what I do, don't be shy to give a thumbs up. Have a pleasant day, everyone. And this is Hennington Time. <laughs>